Hey, all you aspiring filmmakers. If you've been dreaming about shooting your first film for years, we're going to help you bring those dreams down to earth. It doesn't take much to become a weekend warrior, and if you have the time, we'll help you find the basic gear to get you rolling. I'm Mia and this is part one of a two-part series on some basic equipment to get you started on shooting your first film. Since most aspiring filmmakers work other jobs Monday through Friday, your filming almost always ends up getting done on your days off, hence the name Weekend Warrior. So what will you need to get started? Well, we tried to choose affordable products to help you put together a small beginner gear kit, but there are certainly higher end options out there with more features and cheaper options that could probably get the job done as well. With that said, let's begin with two essentials, a camera and a way to capture audio. Entry-level DSLRs or a mirrorless large sensor digital camera are good affordable places to start. Basic camcorders and even most of the larger, more professional ones typically have smaller sensors in them. And while they may be easier to shoot video with than a DSLR, what you'll gain in convenience, you'll lose in film-like image quality. What's important about the camera is not the name brand and not necessarily the price. Here's what you should look for. A large sensor, something that's capable of giving you great details and a cinematic shallow depth of field, a tool that filmmakers have employed for decades. Shooting with a shallow depth of field typically means your focus is on something in the foreground and the background is out of focus. This selective focus allows you to easily direct the viewer's attention. So an APS-C size sensor is a good place to start. If you can afford something with a full frame 35 millimeter sensor, then go for it. The camera will be the single largest equipment investment you'll probably make. Check to make sure that the camera can shoot video at full HD 1080p at 24 frames per second. 24 frames per second is the traditional frame rate for film projection, so that will add to the dramatic cinematic look. One example of an interchangeable lens DSLR that I think is a good choice for beginning filmmakers is the Canon T4i. Other good choices might be the Panasonic Lumex DMC GH2 or GH3, the Nikon D7000, or the Sony SLT A77. There are a couple of reasons why I chose the T4i for this video. You'll find that the 18 megapixel APS-C sensor will capture the detail you're looking for and allow you to shoot with a shallow depth of field. The full-time movie servo autofocus mode will continually focus at a high rate of speed in live view while you're recording. Now, if you're following a moving subject, this can be an extremely useful feature. While manual focus is the best choice for many situations, having the continuous auto focus option will make filming a little easier, especially for beginners. And I would recommend you consider the option of the T4i body and a STM lens. Canon's STM lenses use a stepping motor to allow the T4i to capture continuous auto focus quietly, which is essential for video. Unless, of course, you're shooting only in manual mode. And it's not something that you'll find standard with many DSLRs. Some can't continually autofocus in video mode, or often you'll hear the gears turning inside the camera as it works to track your subject. That can be a killer for natural sound and audio, depending on what your audio setup is. The stepping motor technology in the STM lenses make focusing quiet and quick. This is the EFS 18 to 135 millimeter f 3.5 to 5.6 image stabilization STM lens, which B&H offers with the T4i body in a kit. It's a general lens that will capture a wide angle look all the way to a telephoto. But if you really want to take full advantage of the camera's large sensor and capture close details with a shallow depth of field, think of the tears welling in the corners of an actor's eyes. Look for a fast lens that has a wide maximum aperture, meaning an f-stop of 2.8 or lower. Something like this EF 40mm 2.8 STM lens will capture the moment you're looking for in crisp detail, while using that stepping motor to maintain continuous, quiet autofocus as your actor turns and walks away. Another thing to consider is what type of media you're recording your footage to. 
you want to choose a camera that uses media within your budget. Well, like most entry-level DSLRs, the T4i takes SD, SDHC, and SDXC memory cards. These are standard affordable memory cards. When you look to buy your cards, make sure to choose some that have read and write speeds that are fast enough to keep up with your full HD video needs. Typically, that means you'll need a Class 10 card. A good one to try is the SanDisk 16GB Class 10 card. This card should grant you about 40 minutes of continuous shooting at 1920 by 1080 resolution. Because you'll be using live mode on the LCD screen the entire time that you're shooting, you will, without a doubt, burn through batteries much faster than you would if you were shooting stills. You should charge up one or two extra and have them in your kit ready to go. Then your shoot can continue seamlessly. Now, Canon and other manufacturers sell extra rechargeable lithium-ion battery packs, and if keeping the same name on your gear is important to you, then by all means stock up. But this Peerstone Li Ion battery will also do the trick, and it's a much more affordable choice. Hopefully now you feel comfortable with what to look for when it comes to choosing the right camera and essential accessories to keep the camera running and capture your footage. Unless you're shooting a silent film, which we all now know can win an Oscar even in this day and age, you're going to need some audio options. Clear, balanced audio is almost as important as capturing clear, detailed video. Again, this is where you will separate yourself from home movie makers and give your film a more professional edge. The microphones that come standard on DSLRs at any level, and the ones built into most camcorders, are not meant to capture the clear audio you'll need to tell a story. There are lots of professional audio options that support XLR cables and sound mixers, but a professional setup gets pricey, quick. So my suggestion is, if you're working with a DSLR like the T4i, try an on-camera shotgun microphone for when you're filming close to your subjects, like this Rode Condenser shotgun mic with shock mount. Shotgun microphones are long and excel at picking up sounds directly in front of them. While they don't filter out all of the ambient noise, the narrow focus of this microphone works well to capture close conversation. It does a good job of picking up mid-range frequencies where most human voices fall. Just be mindful that most shotgun mics have a rear lobe, meaning that they will pick up some sound from the rear of the mic, so if you have it on camera, be careful of the noises that you might make as the camera operator. Shotguns work best when they're physically close to the sound source, so if you need to film from several feet away, it's best to move the shotgun off your camera and onto a boom pole. Your audio assistant should hold the mic on the extended boom pole as close to the sound source as possible without getting in the shot. The Rode shotgun mic that we're working with can be purchased as part of a booming kit. So it comes with the on-camera mount and a 6 foot 8 inch boom pole with 10 feet of stereo cable for those times when you need to keep the camera at a distance and still capture clear audio. The most challenging part of film production is deciding where to start. Here's the thing with DSLRs. While many have a stereo microphone port, most don't have a port for headphones. So there's really no way to monitor your audio. It would be incredibly frustrating to spend several hours making sure a scene is captured just right, only to find out later that there was a glitch in the audio. One way around that is to record the audio separately on a handheld recording device like the Zoom H4n. This handy mobile four-track recorder has a 3.5 millimeter microphone input and a headphone jack. It runs on AA batteries and should last about six hours in normal mode. And what's great about this Zoom, and many recorders like it, such as the Tascam DR40, is that it also has two XLR quarter-inch inputs. So as your budget grows and you decide to upgrade your audio kit to include some professional XLR equipment, the H4n can grow with you. It records to a SD or SDHC memory card. The only bummer here is that you'll need to spend a little extra time syncing up your audio and video when you edit your film and post. To make that easier, remember to slate your shot by clapping after announcing the take. If you have any closed back headphones lying around, of course you can use them, but you want to make sure that they're capable of handling high power outputs. These Audio-Technica ATH M30 headphones are cushioned and lightweight. Now, that doesn't sound important, but after an hour or two of shooting, it'll make a big difference. I found that they blocked out external noise well, even in a noisy environment. And at such an affordable price, they won't set you back too much when you add them to your kit. 
Okay, so far we've covered what kind of camera will give you the look and feel of film and a basic audio setup including microphone, audio recorder and headphones. Making sure you're capturing vibrant detailed footage and clear balanced audio are essential to filmmaking. You're halfway through to knowing the gear essentials to becoming a film weekend warrior. In the second part of this series, we'll go over a few affordable options to stabilize your camera and two basic lights that will go a long way towards illuminating your subject or environment. Then at the end of part two, we'll show you a clip of a short film we shot entirely with the equipment we're highlighting in this series. That way you'll have an idea of what you're capable of creating with a basic gear kit like this. I'm Mia McCormick. I'll see you again soon. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.